Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. Bless the Lord for this wonderful day he has uh, granted us. And we can be so sure of our growth in the knowledge of him when we give ourselves some time to listen, to learn, to search, to discover in the gospel what God has to reveal to us about himself, about us, and about about everything, you know. The gospel is the power of God unto whom that believes that it produces salvation. Salvation is the ultimate purpose of that gospel, the soteria, the experience it gives to man, and that is love, that is grace, that is uh, joy, that is the fullness of uh, of what God is, man will experience it through the knowledge of the gospel. And that's why we bring it to you so that you may experience the fullness of God. You see, if you don't discover the love of God in what you're hearing, then you haven't heard the gospel yet. The gospel reveals to us the message that brings the fullness, the fullness of who God is and who God is and who we are as well. So we're discovering a lot, a lot in Romans chapter, in chapter, chapter five. We 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 did chapter six, verse eighteen, and uh, it says, "Being then made free from sin, he became the servants of righteousness, or you became the slaves of righteousness." Verse nineteen says, "I speak after the manner of man, because of the infirmity of your flesh." For as ye have yielded your members, servants, to uncleanness, and to iniquity, and to iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants, to righteousness, and to holiness. So, he says, I, I was, uh, I explained uh, prior to this, uh, uh, to this message of today, you know, a previous message, I said, we acknowledging what we are and what we have, is very very crucial very crucial because it makes the difference and this is exactly what he presents in verse in verse uh, 19 chapter 6 verse 18 tells us uh, that we moved from being slaves to sin now we are slaves to righteousness so we have to acknowledge it and he reveals to us that the reason why we have given our members to be slaves of sin is because of our conviction we had. And not only our conviction, the fact was we were in Adam before Christ came. And before Christ came, we didn't have the ability to be free from sin since it was some kind of inheritance. It was our inheritance. We got it from where we came from. But then Jesus came and changed our our beginnings, our nature, our our identity, and now we have a new identity, which is righteousness we got from Him. Since we are now righteousness of God today, if we are the righteousness of God, something is very important here. We should acknowledge we should acknowledge what we have who we are, where we are, and after acknowledging all that, we do something. We will find ourselves using our members, the members of our body. It is going to be easy to yield the members of our bodies to that righteousness. The reason why we had yielded our members to the righteous, to the, to the sliver of sin, is because that's what we were convinced of. Man was a sinner by, by nature. Man was a sinner by nature. But Christ changed it, that man now is righteous by that new connection we have. Now, by default, we are actually righteous because we come from Christ, you know. And now we have to acknowledge that fact. And after acknowledging that fact, we'll find that our members are yielding to that righteousness. And that's what he's talking about in verse 19. How important this is, brothers and sisters. This is very, very important. You see, the change which is taking place is acknowledging, only acknowledging. You know, you might think about it as a simple thing, but it is very, very deep. You see, in verse 18, 
It was revealed to us that the sovereignty of grace freed us from the enslaving power of the old sin nature. We have now become the servants. And uh, the Greek word actually is doulos. And uh, that, is mean, that means to entirely give ourselves up wholly to Christ, our righteousness, by obeying and giving attentive audience to that specific form of doctrine with all our hearts. So, far from annulling human freedom, total divine sovereignty alone makes such freedom meaningful for only in God do we have our being. Freedom outside of his will is inconceivable, brothers and sisters. In the light of our slavery to the bondage of sin, it is illusory to think that salvation can in any way depend on our efforts or will while we are and are actively enslaved under the tyrant of sin and death. So we have to understand while free agency and responsibility are clearly assumed, these human realities are pictured as coordinates with and indeed subsumed under God's will for his people. If events are not determined in a sense, God cannot know what will take place, and God will be quite limited as to what he could do about it. God cannot be surprised. He knew everything, but this is not the case. Our free agency is guided by the Holy Spirit to serve God according to his specific intents. That verse 18 reveals to us that we are no longer under any other agency but God's. And that's why we are slaves of righteousness. We have to acknowledge that. And that verse 18 brings us to the verse 19 where we discover that the illustration of slavery is an inadequate presentation of the Christian life because it could convey harsh connotations of human slavery and inadequately express the truth that the yoke of Christ is easy and his burden is light. You see, Jesus Christ told us that his yoke is actually easy and his burden is light. When he uses the word slave, it is in a different, it's a different perspective he's trying to portray here not the one that we are used to in human terms. Nevertheless, Paul retains the metaphor, believing that in spite of its weakness, it still conveys the truth he holds in view. The slave is bound to serve his master. The obedience of the believer to God is no less certain. The one is slavery, because the one is independent of the will and coerced to other is perfect freedom because it is rendered from the heart and the full consent of the will. When we are under righteousness, it becomes our will to flow according to that righteousness. We're not bound. We are free to flow according to that righteousness. This sanctification is at the same time positional and experiential. Our position determines our experience. One is that Christ has been made unto us our sanctification. The other is that Christ is expressed through the believer in the life process of consecration. The depth 
of our new allegiance to Jesus Christ as Lord and Master proves how genuine one's conversion is by becoming obedient from the heart and mind, committed to the standards of teachings revealed in the gospel as an occasion for gratitude. We are committed not because we are pushed to do it under a slavery mentality, but because we are willing. We have found out the beauty of being under righteousness. An alternative translation of these verses I require of you no more than is possible for your frail humanity. For I call you only to render to righteousness the same allegiance you once rendered to sin. Paul employs this comparison and makes it clear that Christians should serve righteousness with all the single-minded dedication that characterize their pre-Christian service to such idols as self, materialism, lust, pride, and the abuse of power. Brothers and sisters, Paul is opening up our minds and saying that we had been fooled, we were blinded to commit ourselves to what was this called, what he called the slavery of sin. The slavery of sin is a very, very evil tyranny where men are taken by are taken as it were in the picture of the Jews when they were taken in, into captivity. They were taken by force. Man was taken by force in that slavery through one man. And man was now committed fully to the allegiance of who I was taken to. And that was our lives. And that was our experience throughout the ages. Now that Christ has come and changed and gave us the righteousness of his Father, the true righteousness of God, as a gift in our hypostatic union with him, brothers and sisters, we are now called to perceive that and allow our members commit ourselves to that righteousness, which is now far, far beautiful than you can ever imagine. And you cannot compare it with anything to, any, to anything prior to its arrival. This is what verse 19 calls us, employs us to do through the Apostle Paul, by the Spirit of God, he calls us now to realize this new slavery and allow ourselves to flow into it according to this verse 19. Glory to God forevermore, for we are today the slaves of righteousness, and that's how God perceives you, whether you do it or not. It does not take away the fact, remove the fact that you are a slave of righteousness. You might live in ignorance, but that does not change the fact that that's who you are. And by acknowledging it, it will help you to flow accordingly. Because, like I said, what you have in your conscious, your consciousness becomes your experience. Shalom, shalom.